Hello, this is Cleantech Business Club from Kingston, Massachusetts, United States. And uh, we are inside our new CBC headquarters for the East Coast, which is hosted by Solar Mama, I mean now Cleantech Mama, uh, one of the first women or maybe the only women in the United States uh, who owns a wind park, I think six megawatt uh, wind park. And actually uh, we visited uh, Mary a few days ago in her uh, property and she also now has 4.7 megawatt. It's a solar park, it's a car park, over a car park. And also she has biochar technology and a lot of stuff. We'll speak about it a bit later. So we are just after our team meeting. Uh, we had here together with us Mansur Diagne, who is a co-chair of Cleantech Business Club in Africa. We had also chair for Morocco, uh, Mustafa Bulal, together with Joseph, his brother, and uh, Miss uh, Terry Mary, who is? She's the just retired Senate president, the first woman ever in the state of Massachusetts to serve as the se president of the Senate. And she's very supportive to clean technologies. Yes, she is. She works with me now on uh, finding and empowering new technologies and for it to, to not only make clean energy, but to save energy. Okay, so Mary, uh, we visited uh, your uh, property. Uh, we are looking at the place where maybe in the future will be one of the largest uh, solar companies manufacturing sites uh, in the United States, hopefully. But uh, let's speak uh, about a bit current situation in the United States. So on one hand, we had the new legislation by the Biden administration. On the other hand, we have still some interconnection issues. Is it true? Very true. We want to try to work on putting the public back into public utilities because there's no such thing. They're monopolies. They are certainly pay their sh stockholders, shareholders, which is very nice, but it really is not serving the, the people. We would be able to do, I can't even estimate how much more, a hundred times more uh, renewable energy business if they'd let us tie into the grid. Uh, but it's a two year, three year, it's so overpriced because instead of using the money like they were supposed to, that's how they got a monopoly, they were supposed to take care of the grid, they did other things with it. Uh, and now when you want to tie into the grid with renewable energy, it doesn't matter how small, you do all of their work and rehab all of their power lines, their substations, et cetera, et cetera. It's a very severe problem. Uh, however, we're about to get a new governor, first woman governor ever, which I really don't think. I know she will be a big uh, supporter, helping the people get their, their power prices down, their utility bills down. And that's really where it's going to begin and end, because renewable energy is, is better energy in so many ways, but it really starts with it being so much more affordable. So. And actually, the good news is that uh, we are meeting in Anaheim with uh, some utilities representatives, and actually, they are amongst them the guys who are supporting renewables. Yes, because they realized that solar renewables are becoming really cost competitive. So, actually, it's their business to go for it. From your lips to God's ears, we just really need to tie into the grid in order to make this happen and happen better. That's one thing. The second thing is that we need to stand behind some of this new technology and help them be able to do their test cases and show people what they can do. What about, Mary, uh, you know, the new legislation introduced by the Biden administration? Yeah, it's going to be really, really helpful and I can't wait for it. It's really important, very important, and it's going to improve things. And I think the most important will be the fact that uh, finally, we will not only install solar in US, but we will also produce, yes? I think we're going to be big producers of everything. It, it appears that we really are going to take our jobs back and become manufacturers like we always were. And I think that's really important. And also small businesses. These new technologies are starting in people's basements, their backyards. And I think it's going to be really a new revolution it's going to be a wonderful revolution and speaking about revolution actually a couple of years ago i, I think like 10 years ago i was visiting uh, howard berke so howard with regards in lowell 
and actually his uh, offices, premises, were in the building when the industrial revolution started, yes? <laughs> and actually, uh, Massachusetts was the place where the industrial revolution started. And maybe now, you know, also the second step of revolution, the clean tech revolution for the manufacturing can also restart in Massachusetts, yes? Yes, and we're going to get some help. We're getting a new governor mm -hmm. who's a woman, first woman governor ever, uh, who is going to be very supportive, I believe, in all of this as well. So this is actually great news for you, Mary, yes, because we just visited uh, your 44 hectares, which is like uh, 110 acres, acres land, acres land. Uh, so you have uh, six megawatt of wind energy, 4.7 uh, solar, yes, you have biochar, and uh, this is... the train station, the commuter rail, dead ends right at our site. Oh, exactly, the train station is uh, over there, and uh, I think it's uh, very interesting because the land has all the commercial, industrial permissions, and uh, there is also like a high voltage uh, line which can allow the future manufacturer really to, you know, increase uh, capacities. Is it true? That's true. That's true. So when it comes to the workforce, yes, so Massachusetts is a place uh, with uh, MIT, uh, with uh, a lot of uh, skilled scientists, but also uh, the city of Kingston is supportive towards clean energies, yes? Well, they gave me my permits to uh, build. In fact, when I came uh, uh, back uh, from from my farm in Ecuador in 2008 because the bank said you got to get home mm -hmm. or you're going to lose your land. I had allowed somebody who I thought I had sold the land to put a two and a half million dollar extra mortgage for him to finish the permitting, of which of course he didn't do. But in 2007 and 8, it was such a crash, even if he had done it, I couldn't have done anything with it. So I said to the bank, please don't foreclose on me. Nobody wants to keep this land better than me. I'll figure it out and I will pay you back every nickel. And fortunately for me, the town that I live in had just spent five years studying it. So I said, well, if it's good for the land abutting me, it's certainly going to be good for me. And that's how it all got started. And, and so you became a uh, wind mama, <laughs> afterwards solar mama, now you are <laughs> a clean tech mama. mama. He's named me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you became the uh, clean tech mama. But you are also working on the bigger projects around the world, yeah? like for example, in Mexico. Mexico, we have finally ready uh, to do the final, we basically have all the permits now, we just really need to finish off and do some <laughs> re-signing of uh, contracts to do a 75 megawatts of wind right, uh, less than a mile from uh, California, which will be transported to California. So you know, we have a very nice uh, wind project and also solar as well on the site for Mexico. And it is uh, done together with uh, our chair for Mexico, Miguel. Yes. Miguel, yes, Miguel. Okay, so if anybody would like to be a partner for this project, so people, now's they the are working. Yeah, now's the time. Yeah. And I've also been working on uh, some new technology that's a, a energy generator, and it would also be a base load, which means that it runs 24-7. It doesn't have to wait for wind or solar. Uh, <clears throat> from uh, Bonificio, <clears throat> EER machine, so I'm very anxious to receive that in the United States to show that. Mm -hmm. So uh, Mary, uh, you are involved in the business, but also, you know, since many years, you are involved also in all the social, environmental movements. Uh, yes, and in our club, you are chair for Solar Lights for Peace initiative. Yes, and uh, I would like to ask you, you know, why do you support? I got involved because, first of all, I have a tremendous amount of respect for Adam Hall. I first met him many, many years ago, and when he, he's been living in uh, Dubai. He's a school teacher that really took teaching kids about renewable energy to a whole different level. And every year he was taking a group to um, Africa, they would actually put lights in the schools that didn't have them. And now this affords anyone can can donate uh, a ten dollar a ten dollar donation puts a lamp on some kid's head or in their house that they can come home and when the lights go out which or they don't have any lights but when the sun goes down they can still do their homework and how incredible is that for forty dollars it does two lamps 
plus it supports uh, the educational, program. educational program. So I really wanted to be involved with that. Yes, and I would like to also ask all the people to support the initiative. We'll give the link at the end of the video. Okay. Uh, so Mary, uh, you are involved in this initiative, but you are also, because you have too many you know, roles in the club, you are also chair of Empowering Women Initiative. Yes, and in our club, we are also bringing women and men together because we consider by default there is no difference, yes? <laughs> and uh, why do you support uh, this initiative? And why do you think uh, women should join this initiative? And why they should join actually our industry? I'm a supporter of women because I have seven brothers and <laughs> I, I guess, you know, we all need help. And as they taught me a lot, uh, and they are great, they are great helpmates, but women uh, can and are good at standing up for themselves as well and accomplishing things. We weren't made just to uh, stay home and cook and clean. Uh, we can do that too, in fact, quite well. But uh, we also have our dreams, and I think that we're uh, very clever and we get things done in a different way. And the world certainly needs help. And we certainly need women which are at least 50% of the whole population. So that's a lot of help there. And just like in Massachusetts, we're getting a women governor. Terry Murray, my friend, the first woman that's a state senator. There's a lot of wonderful opportunities now to be, this is kind of a cool time to be a woman. It wasn't 40 or 50 years ago so hot, but it's gotten better. Still is a problem for sure, but it's still better. And I just say to any young woman out there, don't give up, don't say, don't get no. Maybe it's not now, maybe we just have to try later, but don't give up hope. And when it does get rough, go take a bath or do something for yourself. It doesn't have to be expensive, something nice, but then come back and give it there your best because eventually you'll win. If you don't quit, you'll win, I promise you that. Because together we are stronger. Together we are much stronger. Two are more than twice as strong as one. And I believe that. Exactly. So speaking about together we are stronger, you are one of the, you know, I would not say oldest, <laughs> <laughs> but a long time <laughs> members. Yes, a long time members. Yes. And then I would like to ask you, Mary, so why do you think uh, we should work together? Why together we are stronger is so important? And why people should join Cleantech Business Club? Well, we, none of us do anything alone. Uh, we we need help. We've had help since the day we were born. And I'm sure we, the day we die, we'll be getting help. So I found this club, and of course you, Tomas, you are the club, uh, to be very helpful and uh, very strong. And you have great contacts. And that's what it's all about. You get to have contacts. So the club is the center of the contacts in this industry. Exactly. And if you would like to make a business with uh, Mary, so you can contact her directly or even, you know, better to meet her face to face in January at our Cleantech Business Club annual, I think, sixth annual meeting and award Cleantech Awards. Yes, that Mary is also one of the awardees in the past. Yes, Mary? Yes, I'd love to meet you. And there's also some new technology there that I'm going to see, which is very exciting. So there's always something going on. And do you still remember, Mary, what is our flagship sign? Thumbs up for Th solar. Thumbs up for solar, for Mary, for <laughs> our all Cleantech Business Club members, and the most important for our new Cleantech world.